from behind the glory of God and the seven colors of the rainbow was all around around the area with the drum. And the Lord said that the area is settled. It's been activated. And now it's the responsibility of bulls to take it, to take the land. Wow. That's a piece of art right there. Yeah, yeah. That is a beautiful, beautiful spiritual picture. For just a moment, I'd like for if we could move the big drum right up here for just a second. Can we do that? I think a couple guys that help them. Because we want to move expeditiously this afternoon because our time is going to slip away on us and we're going to, it's going to be time before we know it. Because uh, but what I want to do, see, here, remember, gatherings like this are for everybody to be welcome to share their peace. All right? There are times for teachings when you got one guy that's more in the room. But but there are also times for people, this is called a council of the elders, in a sense. So you're the council of kings here, and warriors. And so what we want to do is unlock what everybody sees, see, and let them have a, a, a safe place. It's okay to release who you are. Because then, now that she has released that, see, if she sat back there with that just in her heart, none of us could own it as a company of people. Right. But now we can own it together, and I fully intend to go home and, 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 and create something like that. It might not, you know, sometimes you can't capture exactly what people are seeing, but you can do the best through your filters mm -hmm. to catch them. And so that's what we want to do. Amen? The senior, all artists, what she just did is she painted with her words. Yes. So if you're not skilled at painting with, you know, a canvas like that, don't worry about it. Release that sound and you're painting your sculpting molecules with your words. That's good. You understand what I'm saying? And so we're owning the prophetic release and, and, and painting over Oklahoma with our words like that. But right now, what I'd like to do is have the drummers come, and let's all, who, who again, it's always an invitation. Uh, uh, and, and so, but I, but I want to tell you this. Uh, uh, I would like to join around them, because here's what happened to us. On the way down the Mississippi River, and I'm going to talk about our river experience, I think, in just a little bit. But when we got to Memphis, our sound changed. And in Memphis, we started singing in the round. And Ed Watts, is, Ed Watts is a guy that you don't know his name right now, but I am telling you, you're going to know his name. He's, because there are prophets that God has had in the sheath until now, and now he's pulling them out. And Ed is one of those. And, and what he saw was that, that God is moving now in the round sound. Wow. See, Ray Hughes talks about how native people and even tribal people from Africa, they always met in the round. But then when the white men came, they put them in squares and put them in lines. You see what I'm saying? Total, total uh, unnatural. All right? But now God is returning to the sound of the round where we can see each other's faces and not the, the, not the back of your head so much. You know what I'm saying? So but now when we release a word like that, let's come in, in honor. Let's stand around here like this in the, and and. And, 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 and these guys make this sound. Let, 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 let's do, do what she said. Was, was the bulls on the outside? All right. And so we'll have the, the, the women inside. And if there are any kids here, let them stand real close. And see, what, what it's a picture of is a, a picture of a family protected. Remember last night when we started, I had the women come and the men surround them? So women come right now. And, and, and the men are surrounding you again. Except for the sound in the center. See? Now, if we got any little kids, let them come in, in, before the mamas. And, uh, and what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll release the sound together. So you need to scooch in a little closer so we can get all the way around like that. Yeah. And so that the men can get behind you. All right? So we need some men just to spread out around the women. Yep. If the wives are here, you need to get behind your husband. That's a good order, isn't it? Amen. Thank you, Father. All right? So now, remember, she saw a drum bigger than the city. 
She saw dust moving around the drum. What is that? That's mankind. Dust. Remember what made of dust? Then she saw the bulls on the outside and the women and then the, and the and children. And, and then she saw the atmosphere, the stars. And she saw eagles soaring and flying. And she saw the colors of the rainbow. So now, as they release this sound, whatever sound rises out of your heart, begin to let it, that sound come up. All right? In that, in that vision. You're activating that vision. Actually, it's already been activated. We're just agreeing with the amplification and multiplication. All right? We'll do that for a little bit and see what happens in this.
But you see in that sound. But you see. Yeah, the end part, I saw a bunch of horses. And I don't know what horses used to do, you know, in the native land. But they were going around and just doing like this with something. And they were just warriors. And it's like it's ours. And they were just taking it back. Taking it. So Lord, we praise you for all those that are gathered in this city this weekend. You orchestrated it by your hand. Father, we're praising you that they're all here. And even the Comanches at their power a few miles away. God, we're praising you that they're all being visited. Father, with your love, with your light, and with your purpose, and with revelation of who Elohim is. Thank you for that, Father. Amen. Now, from this circle, we then expand it to every tribe, every tongue. From here to Zion's gate. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Did you see something there? You. Did you see something? Yeah. Um, I don't even know how to explain it. Um, I'll just step over here. Um, I, I mean, just at first, I heard almost a, a weeping or a crying. Um, so in Cheyenne, you know, there, there's the Battle of Washita. That's where I was born um, before I moved to Choctaw Nation. Um, but even while they were playing that, I just I heard almost a woman crying. But I just saw, I mean, almost like the dust coming back up, but it being bitterness coming back up out of the land so that God's love could go back down in the land during that whole thing. So again, that's removing that bitter memory, isn't it? Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for that. Anybody else for you? Yeah. Yeah. this man. I just saw her beating a drum. I seen the same thing you seen. It was dust that was flying up. And the more we kept hitting it, it was like more stuff was shaking loose. Yeah. Yeah. And it was getting, people were loosing things that were on them. It was getting released and released in the air. And the more we kept hitting it, at first we kind of got off beat for a second. And now was the enemy trying to get in, trying to creep in. And then all of a sudden, the whole beat shifted and everybody got right back on tune. And that was the tussle and getting the line back up. And then the alignment set, and then the more we kept hitting it, it was the vibration of the drum, you can see it going through the dust. And it was like penetrating through the dust, and then when everything settled, you see everything settled down, and everything was in the right place. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. What I saw was multitudes of people but they had their backs to the drum when the drum came into harmony. Our cry was a cry to call the particles back. And it went back through your ancestral lines. And that cry went out. And I watched one by one by one by one as we came into more of a one voice, more and more turned towards the drum. They heard, they stopped, and they turned and they looked. They were waiting to come. At the very end, when there was just that one heartbeat, they were all in use and bam, bam. I saw like a bags that were so long and it was like, I don't know if a war hammer has like a, a war axe has like a hammer on one side, but the war hammer was beating down on these bags and it was going down through the bedrock and the limestone and the quartz and the, it was going so far into the earth and every one of those, when it was pounded, um, it was releasing a sound that was, it was doing something even into the depths of the earth, bringing things back into original intent. Uh, So before I came, the Lord had me wear this necklace that my husband got me that is a song of Solomon 8, 7, about my waters, the love is as my waters, and it cannot, it's deep. It's deep, it's the deepest waters, and it cannot be quenched. 
and the Lord said, deep is calling to deep. And so what I kept seeing was that that waters of the deep is washing that bitterness away, and he's calling to the depths of the earth and its people. And it's the hammer of God. <laughs> well, uh, a few months ago I was in Korea, you know, I just recently got saved, you know, and I was all excited, you know, and then I called myself kind of like, you know, practicing, uh, uh, preaching and things like that, and then out of nowhere I said, I am I am the hammer of God, but I didn't mean to say that. So I went like this, I said, what just happened? So I saw the, the picture uh, yesterday, and there was a hammer, and, and I just, I thought, that's the hammer. But then uh, the numbers five, seven, seven, six. I was looking at it, and I know it means a year. But I was born in '76, and if you had five, seven, seven, that's 1976. The last six, it's the month that I was born. So the message is like, if I am a hammer, we are brothers from the same father. So that means we are all hammers, and we have to tear down that wall. Amen. Today we, we thank you that we bless the hammers of God yes. that are on the earth now. Yes. Now, how many of you have driven valves in the ground or stakes in the ground, whether it be metal or wood or whatever? Now, all over the earth, people are doing that. So every time you drive one from now on, you say, Father, as I drive this, thank you that every other valve that's ever been driven is singing again, yes. fresh and new. You see what I'm saying? Because the prayers and the faith that were released when they were driven, they're alive. They're never, they never die. And so whenever we stand on, on purpose with our intent and drive another one, it causes all the rest of them to sing again and prophesy again. You see what I'm saying? So that's a powerful movement that just keeps rippling like waves of the ocean coming on over there. Yeah, Lincoln. Yeah, you got anything about So I don't see as much as I hear. So during the worship, what I can hear is the movement of the angels throughout the assembly. Come on. So I hear the wings as they begin to swoosh. Come on. So that's what I can hear. So as they begin to play the drum faster, then the wings begin, the flight is faster. Come on. Yeah. So the movement that is taking place in the earth is happening fast. Yeah, yeah. 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 we might talk. We might talk. Yes, it is. Now, right at, remember right at the beginning, our sound, first of all, we didn't know how to really start. You, that'll happen to you. But what, then once we started, we, we were all making our sound, but then there's a point when I heard a sound over in this section here, and all of a sudden, I knew that's the sound that we would grab onto to move to the next place. So in a meeting, I'm always listening, whether I'm with musicians or singers, uh, you know, it, who, who, where is the sound coming from that Lord wants to write it on next? Like sometimes I'll, I'll turn to the trumpet player and it's him. You know, or the other night it was a violin player. The other night, it's all, and I always call it, where's the juice at right now? You know what I'm saying? And so what I bless you guys to do, because I carry that, I bless you to be able to hear and recognize that at another level that you've not recognized and heard it before. Because we're always moving deeper in our revelation, deeper in our gifting, and deeper in our grace. So we're thanking you, Father, for this company here now. We're, we're being able to sense those sounds that God wants released now. Those frequencies that He needs to minister to the land now. Amen? Anybody else before we go change? Yes, why? Um, <clears throat> when the lady mentioned the drum coming down, um, I heard it was a reminder or a trigger that was also the same thing as the Father pouring out His Spirit on all flesh. Because the drum covered so much. And then he reminded me that um, the drum releases a vibration of the sound. And then he reminded me of Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, where the Holy Spirit hovered, released a vibration over the waters. So there's a vibration of sound, and his spirit is poured out over this area that's changing things. And what he saw too, the, the, the vibration going through the dust and bringing things up. And the thing he saw about going deep and bringing things from the depths up to the surface again. Some things which were buried, buried treasure will be revealing it. 
This morning when we came and I got out of the car, I heard an Indian woman who was crying. And it almost alarmed me because so deep how she was crying. But as um, the drum was finishing, what I saw was I saw a red rose that was blooming. Kind of amazing. We, we just spent two days in a little convent outside of Oklahoma City, and the very last thing that was released there was a guy had painted a red rose that was had bloomed during that. That's what he saw during the whole worship time. So see, these are not separate. And so when you leave here, your your gathering is not separate from this. Whatever you do next, we're in a swirl now. It's a holy swirl and and, and, a, and a river that we're all moving in. That yes, we. Warrior friend. Um, remember, she was talking about the, the buffaloes facing outwards and calves in the middle. And when we faced inward, I seen. Uh, and I've heard him talk about that in the worship as far as uh, God watching your back and the focus on him. You know? And uh, I seen a native man, man, spirit, angel, or whatever, dancing around. You know? So just before we go take our seats, let's turn around and face out. Amen. So Father, we're just thanking you. And we're praising you. Every bloodline. Every family. Awakening is here. The awakening has always been prophesied is coming. It's here. And we're thanking you for your awakening train that's rumbling. We're thanking you for your angels that are moving. We're thanking you for your buffalo, the bulls that are charging, yes. awakening bulls. Yes. And we praise you, Father, in Jesus' name. I don't know what it was like in the, in the days when they were in teepees and they heard the buffaloes run. I can bet you it was an awakening sound. Amen. Amen. So let's sit down for a few minutes and then we'll, we'll talk. And if I see you get sleepy, we'll get up and drum it <laughs> Did you hear that? Whenever they heard the buffaloes coming, it caused rejoicing to break out because it was everything. It's the life source. Have we had truth about the living God? As he's pouring out now, the life source of everything. But we, as we've been talking about, uh, remember I talked about the identity thief this morning. And now, I just want to give you a, a quick, some of you probably know this, some of you might not. Uh, but we're just going to run through it real quick. And uh, I, I can't remember exactly what Lord had me put in order here, but we'll go with whatever He's planned for us. So, so this is the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And what we've been doing is just simply magnifying who they are. That's one of the most powerful worships that we can do because they, they visit that sound. Now, so the enemy... He's got Baal, he's got worshipers, and, and, and it's all fault. He, remember, he can't create, so he has to counterfeit, all right? So here you got Baal, false authority of the Father, and Jay Swallow called it the unholy trio, remember? And so then you got Leviathan, who's king of the children of pride, wanting want to be a counterfeit of King Jesus. Then you got the Queen of Heaven, which is false worship, divination, a counterfeit of the Holy Spirit, all right? That, that, that's, the, that's the counterfeit. Now, so then this didn't start just recently. This is a picture of the Tower of Babel, and Nimrod was a man who was a mighty hunter, but he was twisted backwards, and what he was doing was he was hunting the hearts of men to put them in captivity rather than release them in the beauty and the glory of God. All right? Now, he had a... Uh, so this is a picture that uh, John Benefield uh, has rewritten the divorce decree. So what I do, every time I drive that on our Mississippi journey, every time we drew a stake, we said, every divorce decree that has ever been decreed, we activate them fresh and new right now. Yes. All right? So those decrees that you were decreed in faith, they're, they're, they're another wave, like a wave crashing over the sea, they're released again. You see what I'm saying? So we, we want to do that. And then so here you got Leviathan, uh, who's king of the children. It says, he beholds every high thing. He is king over all the children of pride. All right? 
and, and, and the characteristics are false religion, religion, illusion, delusion, and chaos. Make no mistake about it, humanism is false religion. Yeah. All right? And for, 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 uh, for years now, our colleges have become Marxist training camps. Mm -hmm. They become humanist farm schools. So they can train uh, children in humanistic thinking, denying God, Messiah defiers, and God deniers. Yeah. So they can be built up in the spirit of Nimrod. And so if you, if you look at this structure right here, the, 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 these obelisks, they look like the Tower of Babel kind of, don't they? Yeah. They're actually they're phallic symbols. Uh, and, and so it's, a, it's just what it is. And then you see this, you know, th this is the Queen of Heaven, and they always have Jesus' as little bitty. All right? The queen, the queen's real big. And worshiping the sun behind it. Nimrod had a wife, and her name was Semiramis. She was the Queen of Babylon and High Priestess of the Babylonian cult religion. She became known as the Mother of God, the Mother of Heaven, and the Queen of Heaven. And they had a son whose name was Tammuz, Birth, and his birthday was December 25th. Jesus was not born on December 25th. He was born during the Feast of Tabernacles. All right? Now, uh, he may be conceived around that time, but he's not, not born there. So, so here's what the Queen of Heaven has looked like through the ages. She changes faces, all right? And so here she is in Ishtar, you know, in Babylon. Here, here, here she's in Phoenicia. She's known as Asherah. So you have a lot of, now you have a lot of dance clubs that, that they have poles. And, 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 and what it is, it's temples to Asherah. The pole dancers are Asherah. They're worshiping and it, it, it's magnifying that spirit in our land. All right? So then you got Egypt. It's Isis. Kind of funny that Isis is raising his head right now, isn't it? And she's, and, and, and she's about captivating and cutting off the heads of Christians. Uh, then you got in Greece, you had Artemis and you had Athena. The city of Nashville has got a, a Parthenon built in the middle of it. It's got a 50-foot statue of Athena. Nashville is music capital of the USA. So the spirit wants to capture the sound. Now, so for years, my dad was taken to the sound of Hank Williams, which was honky-tonk, whiskey, and that kind of thing. And so it, it, it enslaved, how many people have been enslaved by uh, alcohol? Now we got marijuana that they're, 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 is, is legalized drug traffic is all it is. Right. And, and marijuana is a will stealer. It'll steal, your, it'll steal your will for you to do anything else. My voice is getting kind of crazy. I bless my voice, Lord. And then you got uh, Rome, which was Minerva, which we're going to talk about a little bit, connected to the water, goddess of war. And then you got Ceres, uh, goddess of fertility. And, and Chicago's got that over the, uh, uh, the, the, the is, I think it's a grain or commerce. We get what building is. But then you've got Columbia, all right, our, our, our Lady Liberty. And so our nation then has got a district called Columbia, all right? So when politicians get elected and go in there, and they don't, if they're, if they're babes in Christ or children, they, they start voting whacked out stuff. And, because, and that's how come our president needs our prayers right now because so, he's in that district and he's messing the district up. Whether you realize it or not, his hand, he's been appointed by God to be there, not just as a Cyrus. The really thing they hate is he's in Nehemiah because he's building the walls. And, and that's the thing that they cannot stand because the, the, the breaches have been breached, but he's saying, no, 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 we're fixing that. But, so they hate him for that. All right, next slide, please. So these politicians have become, they dance to a puppet master like monkeys, uh, the, like the monkey grinder. You know, they sing Satan's song and they dance to his tune. And they've been, and they've been controlled by a culture of death. That's, where, that's what's been all this. So we know this. You guys have been taught this by Chuck Pierce, but a lot better than me. The idolatry, immorality, innocent bloodshed, and broken covenant. Those are the four things that, that defile the land. We know that. All right? But here's what I talked about this morning. Soul wounds will keep you chained to the last season. And that's what the enemy loves to do, is chain us so that we cannot move with God into the next season. Uh, so here's what socialists have to do. Socialists have to make victims. They, they have to control victims. They, they, can't, they can't control victors because victorious people know who they are in Christ, and that makes them dangerous. So you're either in one of these two places. You're focusing on what Satan has done to you, are you focusing on what Jesus has done for you? Yes. You're in one of those two places. 
right now what Father is doing. See, this is this is the big battle. So they want they want to make government big so that government is God. All right? Yeah. And you get everything from government. And, and so they'll give you a little bitty check to keep you chained, yeah. keep you entitled, an entitlement mentality so that you're, you're dependent on them. All right? God says, no, I want that broken because I've made you kings. And I want you to trust me so that you're wealth creators. Yeah. You see? That, that's the difference right there. All right? Now, so what's happening in the earth right now? Yeah. You are this. You, this is, we're in a school, we're in a company of legals. This is a Patricia King word. She says it's apostles and eagles. It's legals, all right? So it's a, it's a, a, it's a like hybrid that the Lord is releasing right now, all right? And so the, the, this is what warriors, this is what you look like, all right? You're warriors like this. Now, so kingpins are falling. And, and that's what's happening. So we, we praise right now that the kingpins have lost. Yeah. And that, that you're visiting every kingpin. Years ago, I was praying on a Saturday night, and the Lord said, I want you to call the kingpins in. I had never prayed that before, never heard of it before. So he just did what he said to do, and so we called them all in. We called the kingpins. You're coming in from the north side. The next morning at the church, a man came forth and gave his heart to the Lord, and his name, his CB handle, was kingpin. But when he came to the altar, he didn't come by himself. 17 people came with him. So kingpins are like tribal chieftains. Whenever one of them gets saved, a whole tribe comes in. So Lord, we're praising you that we're going forth to kingpins. And we're, going, we're beginning in Lawton. Even kingpins out in Fort Sill. We were thanking you that kingpins all over Oklahoma. From Oklahoma spread to the nation like fire. We praise you that the kingpins are being visited with the mercy and the revelation of the living God. One of the characteristics of this great, 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 say this with great, great, great awakening. Great, great, great awakening. There's whole blocks of people coming out of darkness at one time. Right. This is what's happening right here. The Lion of Judah is breaking chains, old mindsets. that through this company we are roaring and he said yeah look at that bam yeah. all right so there you go now this is what's happening right here jezebel is being thrown to the dogs all right this is the end of jezebel we even saw it whenever Hillary Clinton did not get elected. That was a Jezebel trying to take position. Now that spirit has found another to ride on, vying to be president right now. All right? But, all of, but she's made a covenant with death. She, she said, if I get to be president, I am going to charge everybody who's not paying women the same as men. I'm going to find those companies. Yet in her campaign, she's not paying women as much as men. You see what I'm saying? So it, it, it's all a, a, a lie and a deception. So here we are, the time frame that we are in, the Lord of the Harvest is dancing in the harvest. His footsteps are moving and dancing. So we would come with Father, he said to call those things that are not as though they are. So that's our language shift. Now, so the district of Christ, he's coming to Jerusalem and he's coming to this capital too. But now I want to talk, this is what I want to get to. It's very important right now. As we were on the Mississippi journey, Ed Watts prophesied that the next 10 years are about worshiping at the waters. The next 10 years are about waters being blessed by, by the sons of God. Say this with me, one waters. One waters. Beautiful, isn't it? One waters, right there, just what it is. Within Genesis chapter 1, it says, say this every then God said, Then God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. And let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the firmament. And divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. You can take it to the bank. Amen? And so we'll, we'll go one here. So here's what it was. God said to Adam, Adam, these are my waters. These are your waters. Your job is to make your waters look like my waters. Your waters is that your job is to keep your house 
like I keep my house. Your job is to have the sound of your house sounding just like my house, so I don't even know the difference. I'm in your house or my house. It's yeah. the same. Yeah. That, that, that is the sound that God wants us to create, that wanted Adam to create. All right, that was his job. So, what he was doing, he was putting the image of heaven on earth. Adam was re imaging the earth just like Father had intended. And that's what his job was to keep the waters the same. But then, so here it is it's a circle. Heaven on earth being image. God image here, God's image on earth. But then, when we talked about it last night, when Adam dishonored his father, the waters got changed. All right? And polluted and, and, and corrupted. They didn't sound the same as God's house. Now, but God knew all along this is coming. So from the foundation of the world, the lamb was slain. So at the proper time, he was going to enter at the epicenter. And he changed time. He says, it was like this before me, but now I'm here. And I'm changing stuff. Because I'm the copyright owner. Always have been. Yeah, right. All right? So now, here's what happened. The disobedience of Adam, where he dishonored the father, happened in the garden, didn't it? Okay? So God says, okay, you want to play like that? Let's play in the garden. So he says, I'm going to send my son to the garden. Well, you deceived the first Adam. Watch what the second Adam does. So the second Adam humbled himself to in obedience. And in the garden, he won the victory and brought and honored his father and returned the glory to us. But here's what happened. The king of glory was re-imaging the earth. In the garden, it was lost. In the garden, it was regained. But now, he did a pattern here. What he did was he honored his father. And as he honored his father, the Lord, he said, Lord, I don't want to do this. If there's any other way, uh, but I submit to you. And so then the father showed him what he had to do and gave him authority and the keys to do it. And then he, obedient execution, brought honor back to the Father and thus glory came to mankind. But this wasn't just for Jesus. This is our pattern. Right. As we honor the Father, it unlocks the glory in your heart and He gives you a seed for you to carry. And when He gives you that seed, the authority to finish the job is already in the seed. So when he shows you something, he's given you the authority to carry it out. But as you as you as you ponder it in your heart and pray over it, the keys come to you and the power to execute. And then as you're just obedient to do what he says exactly to do, his kingdom is re-imaged in the earth. Once as when he once he shows you to do something, all he wants you to do is take the next step in what he shows you to do. And then after you do that, then he will show you what he wants next concerning that. Now, now that next step, he may take you to the next ten steps. Like our girl here last night, she said, he called me an artist of rocks. I'm taking that obedience. And so she made a picture in the middle of the night of rocks. This man, I talked about turning the drum cage down. My son goes to the bathroom. There's a cage when he goes in. There's not a cage when he comes out. <laughs> That is obedience. Wow. Quick, quick to obey. Wow. Amen. Now, so we're re-imaging the water. Sorry. That's what we're doing. We're re-imaging right here. What happened here this weekend. We've been doing it a lot in this region this weekend. So, but here's what I want to get to. I, 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 I've, 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 I've shared this a lot of times, but listen to this. Sing to God. Sing praises to His name. Extol Him who rides upon the clouds. By His name. It says extol Him by His name. Say that again. Extol Him by His name. Yah. Say Yah. And, and rejoice before Him. His strength is in the clouds. Now, I, uh, if we would lower the temperature in this room to 20 degrees, Hallelujah. You, would see, you, you would see our breath. So the, the, the water, he likes it cool. Apparently it was too cool for Dolly. Uh, well, she might be sitting under the event. You know anyway, um, what I'm saying is, we are released. We, we're going to talk a little bit about how much water is in us. But we're releasing the water within us and making clouds that God inhabits. Wow. 
this is this is the core of worship. It, it, it's the foundation of it. He says, let everything have breath. Praise me so I can own and ride on the clouds. Wow. Right? Because he says, my strength is in the clouds. So when you praise him and release who you are to him, his strength fills you. The joy of the Lord, he says, what do we rejoice in other words rejoy again yeah. rejoy as you're worshiping me so i can fill you up for strength for the next the next day next now all right so here we are in a covenant movement and it's the ethical 47 waters somebody so i want you to say this with me ankle deep ankle deep ankle deep knee deep Waist deep, waist deep, chest deep, chest deep, deep deep, deep deep, deep deep, deep deep, deep deep, deep deep, ankle deep, ankle deep, get knee deep, knee deep, waist deep, waist deep, chest deep, chest deep, deep deep, deep deep, deep deep, deep deep. That's where we're at. Everybody in this room is somewhere. That depth of water. But what Father's doing right here, not just us, all those people that were outside the gate, all the Buddhas come, the waters are rising. In Jesus' name. Now, and here's what it says And it shall be that everywhere the living, living covenant moves, wherever the covenant rivers go, will live. There will be a very great multitude of fish because the waters go there, for they will be healed and everything will live wherever the covenant goes. So remember that. It's Old Testament. Right now, everywhere the river is moving, there are abundant fish that God sent here. You know something? When I was on the Blues journey in 2015, we scheduled that journey months ahead of time just so that we could have all the musicians clear their calendars to come. When we got to New Orleans, it just happened to be the 45th anniversary of the Jazz Festival. Wow. So when we were there, 500,000 people were in the city. Wow. And they were having a big, they were going to really blow it up. We started worshiping in this little building, and all of a sudden it started raining outside and shutting their Jazz Festival. <laughs> all right? now, now, what God was doing, He said, I got a sound. Mm -hmm. yes. there, there's a song that says, uh, crown him with many crowns, lay him upon the throne. Heart, how the heavenly anthem drowns all music, but it's on. Wow. And then it says, Awake, my soul, and sing. All right? That was written in 1851, by the way. So it's not new. Anyway, we're releasing waters of revelation to cover the sea of humanity. And that's what you're made to do release waters of revelation to cover the sea of humanity. So, but there are all the, those who are, there's another covenant movement, a death movement. It says you'll not bow down and, and worship them in Jesus' name. So, what they want to do, how they've always kept in power. Listen, a long time ago, Pharaoh, what did he want to do? He wanted to kill all the babies to keep his power. What did Germany want to do? They wanted to kill, uh, the, the, the shed blood, the, the, and, and Rome, they, they killed. Uh, before every great move of deliverance in the earth comes the killing times. When, when people try to kill what's coming. That's why they've aborted 60 million babies, because the enemy, that's why even right now, there's another move to get it, not just in the womb, first trimester, we want it all the way to the third and out of the womb. You know why? Because there are deliverers. There are ben and yes. Yes. There are Taurus. Yes. what I'm saying? There are babies that are in the womb right now, because mature sons and women of God are carrying them, and these deliverers are here. Yes. That's how come there's a movement to try to, oh no, we got to stop this. This. And it's like, Kim, oh, no, we, we got to stop this. Yes. I got news for you. So it happened to be right here in this year of Tet. Yes. Defeating a serpent at the gate. The enemy always overplays his hand. Yes. All right. And God says, no, just like I had a Moses. You know, I've always had a deliverer, and I got one now. But I got a, I got a bunch of sons now. All right. And so here is the war over the womb that right now in America is innocent blood from innocent waters. And all those who have voted for a president or a congressman, and they knew when they voted that this guy was for death, have linked themselves to that. 
And we've got church after church that have had politicians come. They're for same-sex marriage and they're for death. And these pastors who are supposed to guard and keep the pulpit for a holy true word, they've invited snakes to the pulpit. And after they leave, the snakes don't leave. So whole congregations have fallen under deception and cast votes for death. And in the inner cities especially, you can see it. They, they, they got, they, they've got a lot of preachers. I want to tell you something. The guys that walked with Martin Luther King, who was a prophet of the living God, had his faults like we all do. But the, the Jesse Jacksons and the guys that walked with him, they've gotten rich off of keeping racism intact. Now, but, and here's the banner they're flying under. The one world government is flying under this banner. Let's say this with me. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. Who put darkness for light and light for darkness. Who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. All right. Remember, I talked to you last night. That flag only has six colors on it. And this is what the, this is what the structure looks like. And this is what the influence of it looks like. In California, you can see the influence of this culture. But what I talked about last night, the measure result is a tense revival. All right? Tense, not tent, tense. Homeless tents being filled with the glory of God. Because of your intercession has broke the power and influence of water spirits. We don't know much about water spirits in our land, but Africa knows a lot about water spirits. And the homeless communities are by oceans, most for the most part by rivers, and so they're influenced by, by, by a spirit that has overtaken them to steal their destiny. But as we intercede now, now there's just been in our nation, it's still going on right now, that I think it's the greatest movement of people going to waters and worshiping at their waters and releasing light that has ever been in a nation. Would that be accurate, Yolanda, do you think? And so God is raising up an army to go and deal with the water stuff. All right? Now, and so see, even in the seven mountains, as we talked about in their homosexual agenda, they had control of that. But God is doing something. He's bringing justice to the waters. Yes. All right? He's bringing great justice to the waters. Yes. Now, uh, uh, our, our trip, I just put this up. See, this is all of the stops that we made on the Mississippi River. Now, this is just my team. There are other teams in Texas. I'm getting texts from every day. There are teams that are all over going to waters and doing stuff, worshiping. All right? But now, I just want to share a few things from our... See, my journey's not finished. I'm home next week. And the week after that, three of us, Ed Watts and Anthony uh, Turner and I, we fly to New York for three days, we fly to Chicago three days, and then we fly to San Francisco and Sacramento making a tav. An iron tav means to see through the cross. Yeah. Uh, all right. And so that's what we're asking, ask, thanking Father for doing. Now, so we started up here and the weather report was really bad. When we were at the headwaters, it was supposed to be 55 degrees and storming. We got there, it was 67 degrees and nice. Right. I had a little jacket on, but I didn't really need it. Now, so we worshiped down the river, and I'm not going to stop everywhere, but I do want to stop at a couple of places. When we got to Burlington, Iowa that night, the Lord, all of a sudden we were worshiping, and He started speaking about Kansas City. He said, I'm going to open the fountains of Kansas City. I'm going to visit Kansas City, the city of that more, has more fountains. In our, than any uh, place in our nation, I'm going to go there. So the next stop in Hannibal, Missouri, we had people from Kansas City come to the meeting. So I told them what happened the night before. And so they go back to Kansas City and start worshiping at the fountains. At that very time frame, there was a, there was a weather pattern that started forming. And it started forming and it became known as Barry. It moved all the way down from Kansas City and into the Gulf. And Barry means strength. All right? So there was a strength release from the fountains of Kansas City that became a hurricane force wind. Wow. All right. Now, whenever Barry got the, 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 all the newscasters were saying it's going to be really bad in the flood New Orleans, but they said all of a sudden, a, a guy, he said, everybody in Louisiana should be praising the Lord because the power of Barry did not come ashore. It was like there was an invisible hand keeping it offshore and most of the waters dumped in the Gulf. Could it be that those waters were, were washing away part of the dead zone, that the, the, the chemicals and stuff stuff in the, the Gulf? But anyway, so... That there, there you go. And so Barry didn't do what the, the weather forecast was going to thought it would do, but it did what God wanted. Yeah, right. Right. So we go on, we go on down to uh, 
uh, Vix, uh, in Memphis and the sound changes. We go to Vicksburg and, and a lady, uh, I, at the end I had a people who had a sound to come up. And this one girl said, I wasn't going to come up because I've been deaf in my left ear for 19 years. I get a word the next day that she's miraculously healed after being deaf for 19 years. In her left ear. Our whole journey has been for less people that have been, that have been hearing deaf to, to hear truth for their ears to be open. Wow. So we get down to New Orleans and we're in Rainbow Park. I told you about that last night. Now we get down to Venice, the farthest you can go, and we, we find a lady, her name is Justine. And so she throws the last spike into the water, Justice in the water. I, I can tell you a lot about that, but I'm not going to waste my time. It's not a waste of time. But, uh, I want to go, okay, this, this, this is, this is, the, God, God says the earth is mine, I have established my kingdom on the earth and the water. Uh, then he says this, here's, here's how we've been dealing with waters all over the nation, releasing light into the waters. I'll just give you this, I'll talk about a couple more things, I'm going to stop, but my voice is about to go. Um, 71% of all the Earth's surface is covered by water. This is what it looks like. Most of uh, uh, it's all salt water, except this is the fresh water right here, 2.5%. Now that breaks out like this. All of it is groundwater and glaciers and ground ice and lakes. But right here is what we have, the waters that we have, right here. And I'm not going to talk about this today. I want to get past that. I want to get past 40% of the waters. It's kind of interesting to me, though, that 40% of the waters that are too polluted for fishing and aquatic life are about the same amount of people that are ensnared in a leftist ideology. It's just kind of weird. Uh, anyway, so here's that dead zone I talked about. The Mississippi River carries an estimated 1.5 metric tons of nitrogen pollution into the Gulf of Mexico each year, creating a dead zone the size of New Jersey. Here's what it looks like. This side, when you get to the Gulf, this is dead, this is life. There's a mark there. I believe Hurricane Barry was dealing with a lot of that. But now, I wanna, uh, I'm not gonna talk about that. I'm gonna talk about that, I'm gonna talk about that. I do wanna say this, say this after me. The battle for the elections, the for the elections and the land, and the land is, coming from the sea. is coming from the sea. Vicki Norton, the Lord told that to a lady named Vicki Norton out of California. See, so our intercession is for waters, rivers, lakes, and stuff on above the earth, on the earth, and below the earth. But look right here. It's about the waters within. Now here you are. You're 75% water. Your blood is 82% water. Your lungs are 90%. Your brain is 70%. Your skeleton is 22, and your cells are 90. So as we're as we're worshiping and blessing the waters. Come on. We were blessing the waters of those who were standing out there dry and thirsty uh, as we were here. We are blessing the waters all over. Remember it said that they were dust? Dust rising from the ground? Father, we're praising you for an outpouring of your rain. But you need to know something. Why has there been so much rain this year? Because we were in the time of the former and the latter rain. It's here. The water has broken. This is my friend Anthony Turner. Anybody in here know Anthony Turner? Raise your hands if you know him. Him and I are married our ministries, and next year we'll be traveling together. It'll be two fathers worship family. That's so we're going to be moving, greeting. And, and orphans come to Anthony Turner like nobody you've ever seen. And so, and, and what it is, it's a black man and a white man worshiping together. But the night before we went on this river journey, Anthony used to be a pastor. And so, uh, right here, is a picture of Benin, Africa. And this is a tree called the Tree of Forgetfulness. And, 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 and in slavery back in, in that day, what it was was one tribe would capture another. Because here was, here was how they were paid. One slave, one gun. So the tribes that had more slaves to sell got the guns and became the dominant tribe or dominant gang. And so the others then, they fought with swords and spears against guys that control the community with guns. So that's the way the, that's the way the deal went down. Now, let me ask you this. Is it any wonder then that black on black crime in our communities could have came from there? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. 
and there's some God's going to God's going to raise up a company of people to deal with it. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how He's going to do it, but I bless you guys that to, to, to be anointed, that to, to, to have light and revelation, to see that this scourge ends. How many how many bloodlines have how many lives have been cut short because of black on black crime? See, the enemy it's either abortion, crime like that, homosexuality. He's always after the seed. He has to stop the seed. Now, so how he did it here, when they would capture them, they had a tree called the tree of forgetfulness. And they would make them walk around this tree. The men nine times would walk around the tree, renouncing who they were, renouncing their tribe, wow. renouncing their homeline, and swearing they would never come back to, wow. to Africa. Right? Wow. So what the enemy was doing, he was he was removing their identity from them, yeah. so they would go to America and be refashioned and reformed. Wow. Make the men walk around nine times and the women walk around seven times. Wow. But now the tree is gone, and in its place they get the statue. Benin is always also the, the place where voodoo was birthed, and so the voodoo deity is Mami Wata. And look at this is a statue of Mommy Water. She's got two pythons around her. One's always or the head of one is always between her breast. The other one's wrapped around her head. Alright? Now, and she's got a trumpet at her mouth blowing over the waters. Alright? So on our journey, we were dealing with this because it's an identity. It's causing delusion to fall off the land and people to be free. To see. Amen. Now I'm about to quit here. So here's what it looks like again. It's working. It's here. Now, I want to talk about this and I'll close because I can see a lot of heads not. It's time to stop this stuff. Uh, and we'll worship and we'll, then we'll go take an early break. How's that sound? All right. But now, this is my friend Ed Watts. You're going to begin to hear a lot about. But his great great grandfather, his dad, this guy's dad was a preacher out in West Virginia. This guy moved to Vicksburg, Mississippi, and he got converted to Mormonism. So he moved to Nauvoo, Illinois, and became a body guard for, Chief, for Joseph Smith. We were in Nauvoo, just happened to be in Nauvoo, on Ed's 53rd birthday. Come on. All right? And so I've been asking God, God, give this guy something. He's with us away from his family. Give him something, man, on his birthday. Just bless him good. So, well, we're driving. This guy said, well, man, he wants to drive a stake in, in front of the temple. They got all kind of cameras there and everything else. He didn't care about no cameras. He's driving. He's whacked out. Good. All right. So, here we are. And right across the street is this statue. So, while we're driving the stake, Anthony's over here. And he comes and gets Ed. He says, Ed, you got to see this. This is a statue. It was the prophet's last ride on June 24th, 1844, 175 years to the day that we're here on Ed's birthday. Wow. So Ed, Ed his, grandma, his grandfather died in Utah, and his grandmother, when she died, there was this prophet, a Mormon prophet, preaching her funeral, and he said, let everybody be ready to meet the Lord. And he said, let, let the bed, the, the, bury the dead, and every man be ready to meet his maker. As soon as he said that, he fell over dead, preaching her funeral. Wow. So what, what the Lord told Ed out of that was the false prophets of Mormonism had died in his bloodline. So now, on this day, here's what the Lord said. He said, you are a prophet to the Mormons, and I'm opening the gate of Mormonism. These prophetic people are all going to come out. Hey. Now, whenever Dutch and Chuck went through all the United States, they called Utah the worship state. Wow. Right? So I'm telling you, and even now that they're in Mormon leadership, they're, they're, there's, there's some shaking. But some of are saying, there's something wrong with our doctrine. Come on. You remember the Worldwide Church of God? Yeah. Yeah. Same thing started happening to those guys. Quick. So right here, right now, from this place, everything that's happened here, we think that in the Mormon community, yeah. in Utah, that yeah. there are prophets rising. Bless the Mormon people to come out of darkness, to come out of delusion, and to see Elohim. They're a tribe, they're a tongue, so why not them too? We call the worship state the worship, the worship and magnify Elohim, the worship and who rides across the Last night, I want to worship out of this one more time. How many did we're not here last night and didn't hear this word? Raise your hand real quickly. See, so that we can all be unified, I want to hear it. 
Say this with me. Tell my people, Tell my people that they're hitless, that they're feeling unseen, has been a cocoon, and give them wings to fly. I'm giving you wings to catch the wind. I'm giving you seven colors. Picture month before we had, had released this word at Rainbow Park. All right, now here, say this with me. I'm forming, I'm forming wings upon my hidden ones. They will, soar. they will soar. They are soaring. They are soaring. With the sound of seven. With the sound of seven. And the seven colors of my spirit. The seven of my spirit. They are releasing. The expression of seven. of glory fire yeah. have been in the refining yeah. fire carrying the seven cup so let's all arise now and let's worship the heck out of some stuff <laughs> is it okay if we don't go exactly to four and go to 3.30 so I can give my voice some rest yes. yeah. maybe, well, you take. maybe a little maybe but my will to see my God that's right here right now where's our brother at that there is Taurus father is he here come my brother he, he had another piece of revelation concerning the caterpillar out of Joel 2. So as we're preparing to come, come. What's your name again? Jeff. Jeff. My brother. And uh, the caterpillar in, in Joel chapter 2, it says he will restore the years that the canker worm and the caterpillar has eaten up. Yes. And what you have taken in in your last season, what you've taken in is what's going to be, what's going to take you and is what's going to break you. But you're not going to. Have, he said that when he restores the years, it doesn't have to look the same. That's right. So when you are restored, you're brought into that butterfly form. Yes. Because you have died to your past. You could have yes. taken in drugs, alcohol, abuse, lies, whatever you've taken in. It's broken you. It's crushed you. You you are no longer who that is. You've been released yes. into a butterfly form. You're something new. Yes. In other words, he's taking what tried to destroy you and you're eating it for your lunch. Right? Now, so, we don't know what we're going to do right here, but we're going to worship. Right? Yeah. Dr. McHugh, do you have anything you want to say before we go to this place? You good? All right, Terry, are you good? Mama Joan, are you good? Anything you want to say? So this is not a time, well, I don't know what time it is. <laughs> so Lord, we're, we're at a place where I don't know what to do next except for worship. And it's an honor to be here in the Impact Center. Yes. I was in the, I was at the Epicenter last noon week this time. Now I'm at the Impact Center. <laughs>
executing justice in the world. And so, Lord, we're thanking you. We are thanking you for those teams. And Lord, every everybody that's going to execute your justice. Now we thank you for seeing your justice reported in our newspapers. We thank you for seeing measurable results.
realize how much water you are, it begins to be apparent that all water has memory and that every drop of water has both good and bad memory. So every water you have ever drank, drunk, ate, whatever, showered in, becomes a part of your frequency or who you are. And when you try to come into a place like this, if you have not dealt with that water and the memory of that water or the frequency of that water, it traps those dramas and traumas and wounds and chaos inside of you. So when you're releasing now in an act of war, worship or warfare, what happens is it becomes a mixed sound. And so you can't bring the holy sound. So we need to start with our own water. And so if, if you'll give me permission, James, I'll just we'll just go there. So just agree with my prayer and say it if you need to, however you need to. So Father God, we come to you. Father God, we come to you. And we thank you. And we thank you. That every molecule, that every molecule and every drop of water, every drop of water in our being. Has the, ability has the ability to carry your sound. To carry your sound. So, we ask for forgiveness so we ask for forgiveness for all sounds, for all, sounds all frequencies, all frequencies that, oppose that oppose the Most High King, the Most High King to, be to be forgiven and removed, and removed from our water. From our water. We now replace it, we now replace it with, the original intent, with the original intent, original design, original design that is a glory carrier. That is a glory carrier. And so, Father, as the drum sounds, Father, as the drum sounds, our heartbeat, our heartbeat will be with the sound, will be with the sound of the Most High King. Of the Most High King. The sound of many waters. And the sound of many waters becomes one water. Becomes one water. And we can now form, and we can now form as an apostolic company. As an apostolic company. This unit. This unit. Without any other sounds. Without any other sounds. And become. And become the weapon. The weapon that you need us to be. So we send Judah first. So we send into this atmosphere. Into this atmosphere. We speak to the land. And we speak to the land. Through the sound of God. Through the sound of God. Many waters. Many waters. Become one. Become one. Amen. Amen.
there. See, everybody's peace is important. If anybody in this room, you've had something that you has came up more than one time and you want to release it, but you keep growing back. How many are like that? If you are, I need you to not draw back now. I need you to come and step right by Yolanda quickly. All right. Now, here's here's what we're doing, guys. This is a prototype. This is things that it's not been been happening a lot in the earth as of yet. This is going to become supernatural and their power is becoming. So at, 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 at moments like this, we want to be quick to be obedient so that we can move and legislate quickly like in and out like that. So we break off of you through the blood of the Son all the fear of the old days. And we want you to know that what you carry is honored and what you carry is important. No matter how young you are, what you release, what you carried last night to us young man, was wonderful. So Father, we're thanking you for everybody. And now these who have had something, but you know, sometimes you want to give others an opportunity and that's good. But right now, I want to hear what you've been seeing all the way down the line. Who came up first, Yolanda? <laughs> <laughs> Yolanda, you know, let's be quick and precise and on this morning, when we were worshiping, I saw the, I saw Fort Sill, and a woman spoke about when she came this morning, she saw a woman, and she heard a wailing woman. And when we were worshiping, I just heard the, the I don't know the, the people that used to live on Fort Sill, but the land that they took from the people, um, I heard the people crying out, and they can't even rest, because they're always sending off those plastic, those bombs. So they're not even able to rest. And just then, when we were worshiping, we talked about the eagle. And I ended up looking up in my spiritual eyes and I had on an eagle's hat. Not, not like the sports, you know, like an actual, like the whole white part and the and the beak and everything. I'm almost finished. And then the last part, <laughs> and then the last part, um, I saw my brother. He said uh, all the pain and everything. And he calls himself God's warrior, but, you know, he's not. Anyway. He's, he's healing families as well. And so my brother is coming into his being as well. You know, we call each other twins. We're not really twins, but. James, I have to say with, with what she just said, it brought confirmation because there was a, in, in the Comanches that are here, which this is considered KCA, um, the military, there was a, a native burial ground out there mm -hmm. and the military dug up those graves and they built houses on them. Mm. And that was not too long ago. Mm. So what do we want to do about that today? Mm. I think we're doing it. So very specifically, Father, we forgive the sin. Can you do it? You're the one in this land. But can you forgive the sin of the desecration and release the cycle of pain that enemies try to keep people tethered to so they can't come to a place of, of their new destiny by being snared to an old pain. Can, we, can you do that for them? I got, got someone to add to what you said. Dr. McEwen was praying. We could see Native women, not just women, but men. And they were dressed in old, I mean ancient old. And and they were submitting. They were bowing down to submit. And right after that, a circle of eagles began to dance. And it remind it was with that beat. And it kind of reminded me how the crows hop. But they were dancing in a circle after these people submitted. They're ready. They're ready. So you go ahead. 
Thank you. Father God, we stand with our brothers and sisters today and united with one voice, yes. with one tribe, yes. united together yes. to say we forgive this day. Yes. And we release, Father. Whatever has been done, Lord, we release it right now in Yeshua's name. Father, we just come into agreement as the family of God. And we say, Father, forgive those and remove any ability for the enemy to continue to cause wounds yes. and to cause uh, deep fractures in the tribe, Father, because of this, because it's a dishonor. And Father, we just come with your honor and we lay it upon this dishonor. And Father, we just ask forgiveness for all those that made the decision to remove the bodies for wherever the bodies are. We just ask, Father, that that will not be used as a portal yes. for the enemy any longer to minister to tribe, to minister to them, Father. And we close that portal. And we thank you that forgiveness transcends all of the sin. Father, we just thank you right now. So we speak to every cell in every generational line, every family line from those members uh, that are being displaced, Father, physically in the ground. We just thank you, Father God, that you supernaturally come down and just fix it. You just fix it. We don't even know what to do to fix it. We just say fix it. And we thank you, Father, for fixing it. And we will no longer allow that to be a sound Yes. that that generation carries or that family line carries we remove that sound in Jesus name from both sides those who dishonor brought dishonor upon themselves and they're trapped in another kind of circle yeah. hey I heard Mahanium which is the place where Jacob said surely God is in this place and it means the camp of two armies of angels and earth moving in a circular dance or dance. ready to go to battle, but before he was going to battle, his head was bowed because he was praying, making sure that he was ready for going to battle with God on his side because he had his armor and he just needed the God's provision to go with him and he was prepared. So he made sure he was praying and so he's in an attitude of prayer before he went into the battle. And then when Yolanda was talking about the waters, I saw the body a human body turned into water and this waves of clear pure healing water was going on through the whole body and the body was no longer looking like a body but a bath of water so mine is often more of a sensing and as we were worshiping with the drums earlier in a circle we could sense that especially as the beats became more confident and we became more confident worshipers. The, it was, as we worshiped with the drums, our decrees were like lightning strikes in the ground. Um, so it was a picture of the movement of the crowned bobs, as us as the crowned bobs. Also last night, when we were worshiping, I did see it was eagles and 
eagles with angels and doves flying through and we got to it was dark it was just dark and then we pierced through to clouds and the eagles we had uh, we had scrolls that we were holding to deliver and as that faded I saw the pic your picture of Jesus leaping through the fields of harvest and people sons started coming out of doors and leaping and dancing with him through the harvest um, last night I seen I see and I came back up that's why I wanted to say so a bear with a crown on and you were going so far so I mean obviously there's a lot of different in my mind, but also last night I was fishing. I, fished a while. I went fishing in the middle of the night, and you're talking about the waters, and I would see what I believe is you know, spirits. It was out by Medicine Park, which I've heard of a lot of things that happen in Medicine Park as well as ours. But even just the continual of witchcraft, perversion, whatever it is, but there is stuff in the water. So, what we do, because he saw it and brought it up to our attention right now, Father, we think that the earth is your, yes. and those waters are your. Yes. And those who have been trying to defile those waters or have defiled those waters, yes. we're thanking you now that your blood. Yeah. You, you, whatever you see it is because it's cropped its head off yeah. so you can cut its head off yeah. all right so we're praising you that's what's happening here we speak the medicine lake and we say you're full of good medicine yeah. Yeah. You're, you're full of we, we stick the cross right in the middle yes. of the lake yeah. in jesus name yeah. amen so when you see stuff like that you, you release the kingdom to it all right he shows it to you because he, okay i've seen that you're not remaining here yeah. all right uh, this is the word that I didn't get last night. Um, so I saw um, Fort Sill as a city on a hill, a lighted city on a hill, and it's not supposed to be in that position. And I saw the transition of the ecclesia, I'll paraphrase it, as this church was transitioned into the ecclesia, it would replace that city on the hill. Okay. And I saw this ecclesia rising up over Fort Sill over this area and was the governing ruling body. Okay. Fort Sill is a fort place, it's a fort protection, it's what its natural place was, but it's been taking that place until the church, that Sia, takes its place. Right? So as you as your body transitions from a church to a Sia, it's a big difference, right? There's a gap. Yeah. So as you become a Sia, I saw you rise up, I saw your lights become they were focusing, they became very bright, and they were doing two things. One, they were blinding the enemy and exposing the works of darkness. Okay? But you're not there yet. You're in that transition place. That's your destiny. That's the destiny. If you guys steward it and grow into it, this would be a great place. Um, I was sharing, I shared with Apostle Joanne, I had a, I had a dream about this gathering uh, two nights ago, and I believe that this is that time. Um, I dreamed that we there was a dance that was going on um, that was being led by Dr. McHugh. Yes. <laughs> and um, yes, but the, the picture the picture that you had um, up on the screen that had the the messenger that was blowing the mist. There was a messenger that came and stood in front of me, and he was blowing mist. Wow. And there was a uh, a cameraman that came and he was taking pictures. But he blew that mist three times. He blew that mist three times in the midst of everyone dancing. Amen. Amen. Doctor, are you going to be here tonight? Yes. 
Um, I should have said something last night. When we started worshiping at the very beginning, um, suddenly uh, this whole place turned into a desert. And I was standing right in the middle of it, and I saw mountains around me. And as I was looking up, the mountains started uh, producing waterfalls, um, massive waterfalls. And within the waterfalls, there were sparkles and light that started producing as the waterfalls fell. And as I was looking up, I said, Lord, what, what does that mean, this great eagle with a, a wingspan that covered the whole desert? Uh, flew over and he was making this noise and as he was making this scream his eyes the light came flashing out into the ground and the next thing I know out of the ground came people that were dressed in a robe of many colors yeah. hundreds of them thousands of them where the light just started streaming out of these people with their hands raised and just praises were coming up. I mean, it was it, it was absolutely immense. And I said, Lord, what does all that mean? And, and the, uh, all I saw was the eagle just opening its mouth and the light was coming down. And I thought, oh my goodness. And the next thing I know, I was back in this room. Um, but, uh, I wrote it down what the Lord gave me because I knew I get too nervous and I forget. <laughs> but the Lord did speak to me and um, if I have just a second, I would like to get my book. Am I allowed to do that? Yes, yes. <laughs> now, remember, we are learning how to function in this new order of government. All right? But you, please listen to me. Whenever I ask what you're seeing, and I know that you're new at this, so there's grace for us. But you're going to be in meetings when you're holding the key to the meeting. That's right. Yeah. And see, your obedience, not, not, not to hold it till you go home, but to deliver it that night, see? Because that, that what unlocks the glory of the meeting. Is, remember I said our obedience? When he shows you something, he wants you to be obedient. So when I ask you to be uh, uh, to deliver it, that's a doorway for you to walk in that obedience. And the anointing's on a dim. Yes, and it's, on, it's really on a dim. So it, we can, it'll help us move in different dimensions and own it together. You see what I'm saying? But the Lord is training us, and that's what we're doing. And that's how that it's okay. But please hear me on that. And he said, I will pour out the spirit of the seer to all my people, so they will be able to discern and know the attacks of the enemy in advance. And they will bring, they will be able to bring to naught all the enemy's devices by their voice of praise and the dance of victory and war. Amen. Amen. It's powerful. A lot of powerful stuff was happening last night. Amen. Okay, so I'm not seeing what everybody else sees, so I'm sorry. See, this video, you don't have to. The bats, the stakes, plots, they were being put, like your picture, in the ground, and there was a lock in the middle. And they're like conductors of electricity. Mm -hmm. So, as before it could be unlocked, there was, like you said, we're reaching into a new sound and this sound won't be able to be duplicated or repeated. So, I guess all the bots make the same sound. Let's, let's, let's get, it's not a bit of tea, it's a big bob. 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 So, it created a charge that came from heaven down to the world and connected, which created a, um, kind of like, a, I would only describe it as an earthquake that hit the ground, that penetrated all the way to the core and shifted everything like what they saw as far as the dust and everything they so. See guys, it's happening. There was two things I seen. One, 
when he first started playing the drum, he couldn't get on beat with the first drum. And I couldn't figure out why. And then when Dr. McLeod, that's her name? McHugh. Yeah. McHugh, I'm sorry. When she spoke what it was, then it made sense. The minute we started beating the drum, the drum turned to a humongous red rose that bloomed. And the more we kept beating it, the red started running out of it. And it went into the ground. So to answer the question about what happened to Fort Seal, at the end of us beating it, God said it's finished. Oh. And that was his blood covering everything. Amen. The second thing was, earlier when we were beating the drum, and I said the vibration was going through the dust, I couldn't figure out what it was. But what it was is the word of God being established. Everything that prayers that were going out, it was going through the dust. And it was hitting like the vibes, like she was saying, and it was penetrating through the ground, establishing in the earth everything we spoke. In. Don't you love prophetic people? Yes, I love them a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so the two words that were released today were meant for last night. And the interpretation of what God is saying is that first, I will tear down, there's your desert. Then I will clean, there's your water. Then I will rebuild. And the ecclesia that's being spoken about cannot exist until the church has been torn down. That's right. And then the Holy Spirit can clean, and then he can build the ecclesia. So then it can take its place. So please, anytime there's a word, give it in the season that it's due. And if I could pray. Father, we want to come before you now, and we seal what you have said. We thank you for the word and for the interpretation. We thank you that even though we feel like we're going through, that it is working for our good. And it is meant not to break us, but to build us, that we may be one, to see the same thing, speak the same thing, and make one sound. In Jesus' name. Amen. I, stay right I want to adjust her language just a little bit. Right? Because if it's finished, it's finished. And we are one already. You see what I'm saying? The manifestation of that, we're just we're walking it out. All right? So, Father, we're praising you. Father, that, that you're building your church right now. This is a part of it. Another dimension. We're not like we were when we came in this room two days ago. Or yesterday. So we bless you. Where do you go to church? Where you where you where you fellowship? Uh, United United Bishop Collins. Bishop Collins. There you go. This, I love this is prophet, 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 prophet. You're his wife. Ah. <laughs> I love that man. Hey man, I can see why you do. <laughs> and not just that, every one of the people that come with you, they're awesome group of people. Yes. Amen. And you know the rock builder she is for sure. All right, anybody else before we take a break? Yes. So sorry for not being obedient immediately when you offered the invitation to give a word, but um, what we were seeing. So this is from my brother, the hammer over here. Um, I had a dream early this morning when I first woke up that um, a, not, a young African American man had come into my house and torn down some walls that had been erected there since my childhood and lit fires in there and um, I was freaking out and I'm like you're gonna set my house on fire dude and um but you know and, and he's like no no it's okay it's okay it's not gonna catch anything else on fire it's just where it's supposed to be and there were copper wires around um, the fires and um, I was like no really it's catching that door on fire see and you're like no no it's um it's not the door's not on fire it's just glowing it's reflecting the fire and you reached out your hand and touched the door and moved it back into place and and so when I woke up I was looking up all the symbols in the dream and um, copper is respiration like it's needed it's a trace element that's needed in our body that helps us breathe and then it's also like it's stored in our liver and if we don't have enough copper in our body we can develop like rheumatoid arthritis or um, joint or muscle pain um, or bone pain and so, um, and the one thing that I couldn't figure out, I was like, who's the young African-American guy that was knocking down walls and building fires in my house? And then when you said you were the hammer of God, it was like, oh, well, it was probably him. Yeah. <laughs> so. Amen. 
Oh, there you go. <laughs> you got, you got something? Yeah. Well, I just want to tell this young man right here. What is your name? Michael. I just, you are a warrior. I don't know if, if you really realize that or not. But you are, there's something about you that God is going to use, even with your people. You are just like a, like a, a son of a chief. You, you are dressed with feathers and, and garments, and you're worshiping your God. And when you see those things like you see, like you saw in the water, you speak to those things. You speak kingdom to those things. And you rejoice and you worship the Lord your God in the middle of those things. Thank you. Um, he heard something like that last night, didn't he, Mr. Michael? He heard something like that last night, that you're a warrior. Um, okay, dear. Okay. Um, so when I first came in today, I was just looking at the atmosphere, and I saw all these little whirlwinds up above us. And I was like, well, that's cool. And then God kind of shouted at me, and he's like, open your eyes and see... And so I was like, okay. And so I looked again, and there was this funnel that came down, and I just kind of left it at that. And then when we started worshiping with the drums, I saw um, these angels come down with a censer from the heavenlies. They had coals from the altar, and their worship met our worship. And it created this whirlwind. This, as I looked in the heavens, um, you can see these horses of all different kinds, like some had spots on them, some had different colors, but every single one of them had a, um, a handprint on them that was blood red. And they were all marked, but they were running and running and running around the throne room as the drum speed. And they used the whirlwind, the whirlwind was the catalyst to release them on the earth. So as they were released on the earth, I watched them, there was two, they split in two, Lines. One line went along the shoreline to cut off the spirits from reaching inland, and the other line went straight on the waters. And they didn't need dry land to go through; they went right on top of the waters. And I think there will be a continuation of that, but I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> Very good. Very good. You have something else to do? Yeah. Whenever we were doing the dance the first time, I wonder we were going in a circle, and then we switched, and we went. The, I started seeing fire like we were doing, there was a ring of fire on our feet. And whenever the music, whenever the drums stopped here, I could still hear a drum in the back, and I think it was somebody, your son maybe, playing real lightly, and it sounded like a clock was ticking. Pick up, we got our young warrior right here. So um, when we stopped worship and everything and Dr. Um, That's okay. <laughs> Dr. Yo. Dr. Yo. Um, when she stopped it, then she prayed for forgiveness and everything. I seen an angel. I seen an angel kind of like ushering its like hand behind the back and like going forward, like showing the way to go, and had armor on it. That's wow. uh, so. Uh, I don't know what this means, but I know the lady, she said something about uh, Native American with feathers and things like that. So I kept seeing uh, a Native American. It was a black and white picture who was standing here, right here. And I saw it twice. The second time there were like horses going around here. It was all black and white. And he was just standing there like he was listening. So I don't know, I don't know. And so that was, I, I got uh, curious when she said about you. And you were sitting right here. <laughs> so, yeah. I do want to take Dr. Yo off the spot. I was talking about your dance, you know. So maybe, maybe I should. But, uh, I, I withdraw my request, Lord. <laughs> I just want to remind everybody, this is the Hebraic month of Tammuz. Right. And with Tammuz, one of the biggest and most important things 
is that this is the month that light is supposed to be shining out of our eyes. And so you have to have it kind of in you to shine out of you. Right. Okay. And so what we're hearing today is he's opening up those cracks. He's opening up those places where the enemy has stolen your light. Okay. And he can do it a million different ways. But when we contain ourselves into his full upgraded armor, then that light just gets to be like a laser. And it starts cutting through everything that's there. So like when you go fishing, okay, and you see all the things of the enemy, there gets to be a place inside of you as a warrior where you have no fear. And no matter what you see, you have no fear because you know that the light inside of you is taking care of that. And to remind you, I get excited. I know y'all are already concerned about me as it is, but <laughs> I get excited when I see the enemy. You know why? Because the instant I see him, it means I have total, absolute authority over everything I see. So if you come in with that mindset, you don't have to work up to it once he shows up. You're already there and you're like praising God. Like, bring it on. Okay? Let's do this because it shifts it. Amen. Amen. Our sister had one more thing to say. This weekend was about the seven colors. I was born to fit the taboos. But uh, um, uh, the indigo color. Um, I have to embrace my Cherokee roots, and I've been kind of not ashamed, but like I don't, I don't look like like you know Native Americans. I don't have the tag, you know. But um, I, I, I do. I embrace that part of my heritage, and I accept my big feet, and my big hands, and my love for music. I want to say two things. Number one, who wants to see a move of God? I want you to raise your hand. Well, guess what? You are a move of God. That's why you need to begin to see that you're a move of God because when you see yourself as a move of God, you won't hesitate to release the move of God through your sound. So I'm challenging all of you who, I know you came up and you said, I'm sorry, or you apologized that you didn't say it. Okay, get past that. And let's release what God says when He's ready to release it. Because the last thing you want to do is be held accountable for by God for being disobedient. Number one. Yes, I do bring correction. We are a move of God. We're not waiting God is actually waiting on us to move so He can shift things into right perspective the way they are today. Starting to shift in right alignment with what He wants. Number two, Mike, it's time to start running. You've heard this word long enough. Embrace what God has set inside of you to fulfill. You are a warrior. You've known that. You've heard I don't know how many prophetic words <laughs> pertaining to that. You can't run no more. You will be held accountable if you don't fulfill what God has called you to do. It will be considered defilement of the land if you go to the grave holding on what God intended you to do. So today... Mark this day, let it be written in the books of heaven that today you embrace and begin to war as the warrior that God has set you on this earth. This earth needs you as a warrior. Amen. Let's go get 
some rest or food or whatever blesses your body. And Dr. McCune, if you're here tonight, we bless you. We realize if you need to go, we're not, we're not going to hold you to a dance tonight. Yeah, we do. Amen. So how many, how many don't think you will be here tonight? Let us know. Lift your hand.